properly good, whatever. You, we accept that. So we've been told things and we accept that. And then you go to a next stage in life where you logically, rationally, try to understand the things that you've been told that is right and wrong. You try to make sense out of it. You try to contextualize it. You try to, you know, get some more information. And in my journey towards getting more information, um, I kind of come upon Islam. And from that, you know, that's where my journey started, yeah. yeah. Obviously, you've got the two different religions of Christianity and Islam, so what made you... Is, is some, okay, let me put this here. Did something put you off of Christianity? Or is something interesting in, in Islam? <laughs> yeah, I, well... I, you see what I'm trying to yeah, say? Okay, yeah. you me. Okay. Yeah, uh, well, uh, you're right. It's a very good question you have. It's not what put me off, okay. but it's much what, what I you? thought was taking it to the next level. So I don't disbelieve in Christianity. I don't disbelieve in the morals and a lot of what I was raised upon. But what I did, I just kind of progressed and upgraded my faith to some next level. So that's how I saw my journey as an upgrade and a progression and a development. Yeah. So you see it as a progression? Yeah? It is a progression, yeah, yeah the development. But so I, that is your experience, though. I can't go against your experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Experience, yeah. Experience, yeah. Are we, we're sharing experiences, really. We're here to share experiences. I'm not here to debate you in no way, and I have no interest no, 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 in, debate. you know, discussion, in, discussion, yeah, discussion. No, I had no interest in debating or invalidating any of your experience. But I'm very pleased to see that you have moved on from uh, one type of lifestyle to a much more conscious, God-fearing lifestyle. And perhaps might be that um, your lifestyle might progress, your faith might progress. It may develop. Who knows? You know, God knows. You know. From what I can't say, 2008, I know what I know, so I'll just always keep, I'll always be the one. Yeah. 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 So I'm, I'm sure you know what you know. So what's, what's okay? Okay. How many years have you been in Islam? Let me just. How many years have you been? A in long time. Yeah. Okay. A long time. What's the, what's the thing that attracts you most? I think Islam is unique. I think it's unique and very special because the way I break it down, there's only five religions in this world. And one, pure monotheism, pure polytheism, polytheism and monotheism mixed, Satanism and hedonism. So there's only four religions in the world. And I'm very honored that I am part of, I'm a Muslim connected to Islam, which is pure monotheism. And by pure monotheism means to say, you worship one God without intermediaries. You worship one God in exclusive oneness, which is very, very different to the New Testament or the Christian view. It's, it's a very different thing. And the main thing, the, one of the central message of the Quran is to teach mankind who God is and to teach mankind who God is not. That's one of the main messages I find with the Quran. And one of the most interesting concepts for me is me developing knowledge and understanding and who God is and who God is not. So in Islam, God is not begotten. He's not begotten. He is completely independent and he does not depend on no one. God is not a man and has no interest in becoming his creation or, let, or a man. He has no interest in that. God does not regret, does not regret, right? And God is uniquely the creator of everything. So I am very, very pleased and satisfied with the journey of developing a profound knowledge on who God is and who God is not. So uh, these are the two central things to me, is to understand that I've broken it down. There are only five religions in the world, and I am part of one of them that takes the identity of your monetism. Okay, I respect. I respect. I told you what you just said was excellent. Excellent explanation. Okay.
Okay. Okay, I respect that, yes. Okay, you, 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 broke, you broke it out perfectly. Well, you see, um, okay, I want to touch on something, the concept of truth. The concept of truth. Well, obviously, you're Muslim, I'm Christian. So, I believe what I, I mean is the truth. You believe what you mean is the truth. Okay. No, but you don't know about Islam like me. So you, what you know, you what you know. You Christians say like me, but I can say that as well. Right? No, you can say it, but the question is, I was born and raised as a Christian, okay. practicing Christian. Okay. So you can say that if you want, because... Okay, I leave that, okay. you, but you can say what you just said there. Yeah. No, I can say that, not because I'm lying, it's because I was born as a Christian, from a Christian family, practicing Christianity from the inception. So I know Christianity and I know Islam. You know Christianity, but you don't know Islam. So the question is, if you go to a country where they're worshiping rats and cows and dogs, that's what they're worshiping. So that's what he knows. But if that person who worshiping rats and cows and dogs come here now to me and you who worshiping one God, that's a complete different comparison. He have to make a new judgment. You understand? So for example, if I eat one fruit in my life, all I know is one fruit. My fruit is the sweetest fruit. But when I start tasting other fruits, then I can say which fruit is the sweetest. So I understand that's what you were born and raised with, but that's, that's what you know, and you entitled to hold that view. But when you come to comparing other faiths or other beliefs, this is where you come to make an informed decision or a different decision. You can either become stronger in your faith or you can progress and develop your faith. So, have you been in touch with Muslims? Have you been in touch with Islam? Have you? Many, many, many. Over many years, Muslims. Since secondary school, I'll say. No, I mean, uh, on this level now. But on this level, yeah, many, many. Uh, you've been, you uh, been in touch with Muslims. Yeah, you have multiple conversations. As, as an evangelist. So you, you have I'm, I'm, multiple conversations. Multiple and what, what do you gather is the central message of these Muslims, of Islam? What do you think is the central message? I know what your central message is. But do you, what do you, what do you gather is the central message of Islam? That your uh, central message that, they, that many of them they start with this way, but I'm not sure if the central message, like your God Allah is a, is a true God, and uh, the, but the Prophet Muhammad is his messenger. That's okay. what. That's what. Okay, that's the way they start the conversation. But what I gather is uh, they have a strong belief, as you said, monotheism. But I'm not saying the, the creator of the heavens and the earth, he is, regardless of what we say he is. So if a Muslim come and say Allah is the true God, put that aside for one second. We're saying the creator of the heavens and the earth, he is who he is, regardless of what we say. So we're talking about the creator here, right. The central message I'm saying to you, which I'm sharing... Okay, tell me what is, the central message is. Yeah, which I said, before. the central message of the Qur'an is to teach mankind who God is and who God is not. When the human being know his maker and he, who, he know who is not his maker, it's very easy for the human being to serve his creator and his master. So the important thing, the starting point for us is to fully understand, fully understand with the best of our knowledge, not our emotion, with knowledge, the best of our knowledge, who God is and who God is not. So as I said to you before, we don't believe God is a man. We don't believe God is a father. We don't believe God regrets. We don't believe God is part of his creation. We don't believe God need children or he have children. We don't believe in concepts of begotten. We don't believe in that. We believe in a God that does not regret. We believe in a God that does not beget. We believe in a God who is not begotten. We believe in a God who is not a father and he does not have children. He does not have sons. He does not have daughters. He is independent and all of his creation is 100% reliant upon him. So the, the, the central message of Islam is really to convey to mankind who God is and who God is not. That's the central message of the Quran. I, I, that's, that, that's the central message. Outside of that, 
after one person, a person understands who his God is, he will also understand an overview of why God created him. And that God created him and he created guidance for him. And he also created a hereafter with accountability of justice for those who serve God and those who deny God. So this is the central message of the Quran. So I'm not sure what conversations you have gathered from Muslims, but one of the central themes of the Quran is to teach mankind who God is and who God is not. And that's the most important why. Because as a Christian, and you get and you get and you get an understanding of that who God is from, from the Quran, correct? Well okay, and that's well we know about God, knowledge of God is found in the divine guidance. So God, God sent prophets and he sent revelation. Yes. We also know of God through looking at his creation. We know of God through his creation. We know of God by observing the laws of nature, the laws of his creation. We also know God through our prayers to God. When we pray to God, we know of God. And the impact of our prayers, when we invite God into our life, we invoke God into our life, the impact of our prayers is the way God responds to us. So that's how we know God. So God is known I, via prophets and revelation, through prayers, and also through human experience, and also through looking at the creation. That's how we gain knowledge of God. No, no. Okay. So let me try to enlighten you a bit about Christianity and then we'll probably end it. Unless you want to continue more. Yeah. yeah. Well, we got free time here. Yeah. yeah. But we're saying you, you will understand wait, that. Wait, 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 wait. Sorry. What do you understand? Let me just ask this quick question. What do you understand about. You said you understand the co Christians. Let me see. Let me hear your understanding. Also, you were a Christian before. Let me hear your understanding first. So, what, what do you understand about the co Christians? The, the, from the, 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 yeah. the so, so, the New Testament core concept is that, number one, that Jesus died for your sins. That's number one. And number two, you know, um, who God is, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So the two fundamental concepts of the New Testament is really the, uh, the crucifixion and the Trinity. Father, Son, Holy Ghost, and Jesus died for your sins. That's the fundamental concept of the New Testament. You're correct there, you're correct. I can't, I can't add any extra there. The, the core concept is the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, and the cross for our sins. Right. That's, we, that's the two we, concepts. We, we the Quran is different. Yeah. The Quran, the concept of the Quran is to teach mankind who God is. But, okay, how can you, I, how can you guys go? Because, we, because, okay, let me wait on a bit of history there. Obviously, Adam and Eve came and they, they, they disobeyed God. Sin entered the world because of sin. Sin separated us from, from God. Yes, no? uh, so, uh, the the wage of sin is death. The scripture says, uh, no, no one is righteous. All, all are sin. Jesus. Each and every one of us. No, uh, for all our sin have fallen short of the glory of God. Okay, let me hear. I'm with so, you. So, uh, so for, us, for us, we say that we need someone to connect us to the Father. And that was Jesus Christ who came on the earth. Just like 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the word, the word was gone, the word was gone. And just like 1 verse 14, it says that word became flesh, Jesus Christ, and dwelt among us. And obviously, we, we take John 3 16. For God so loved the world as he gave his only the Son. Everyone believing to them should not perish, begotten. So it was. I had that conversation today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody so, was quoting the same so scripture. Where did you think James Bartlett got it? Okay, I'm quoting scripture, but they're just to enlighten people as well. Genesis 1 verse 26. It says, This is made men in an image and likeness. So that's why people get confused. Okay, Jesus Christ came as he came to the, um, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, called the Son of God. He said, God, the Father. Because he tried to bring us to the original concept. If you have family, of, you know, if today we have family, you have your wife, your children, your, your, your mom, your dad. The concept of family came, comes from God. So God tries to replicate that. And this guy says, so that's calling the Father. I am a Father and one. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, does God have a wife, does God have a mother? No, that's, you're looking at it from a humanistic point of view. So the Father is like, he's a, he's a carer. He supplies for you. So that's the father, you know. So that's what Jesus Christ is saying. The father is the one that supplied everything for us. And the father, that's what Jesus Christ came to show us the way of the father. The way of the kingdom of heaven. 
Because remember, remember he said, repent, the kingdom, God, the kingdom of God is at hand. Or the kingdom of heaven is at hand, repent. Repent means to change your lifestyle, change your way of thinking. To line up with the word of God. What was Jesus Christ doing? Good. The book of Acts says, a man who went about doing good, he knows who was sick. So he went around, as you, if you read the Gospels, the man Jesus Christ himself, as you believe God in the flesh, people, people disagree and disagree, but that's what you know. But I believe in it. So he went about doing good, healing those who were sick, <coughs> performing miracles. People marvel, said, these miracles have been done since the prophets. You know, I think those are 400 years ago, between Malachi and Matthew or something like that. So yeah, so it came about a kingdom. You know, but he came, he came to came to show us the way of love. Obviously, we see the, the teachings of Jesus, the life of Jesus, humility, and, and you know, the leadership with him and the disciples. He was a teacher to show us the way of the kingdom of God, which was okay. Let's say it was, it was never shown anyway. But it was also I could also say that it was lost from the time of Adam and Eve, because God wanted to show it to them as well. But also because of the connection, the, the breaking, the sin. That's why everyone must die because of sin. It's something that God has about. Jesus Christ said, "I came that you might have life, life in abundance." So Jesus Christ came to give us the spirits of life, eternal life. Is the sun water? No. Is the sun water? Remember, John 3, 16, I said. For God so loved the world, that's the case of God's son, everyone believes he shall perish. Of eternal life. <laughs> well, that, I, I, that eternal life. Okay, people say, how can I, someone, someone asked me a couple of weeks ago, how can I have eternal life? I will eventually die. You're correct. It's about your spirit life. Mm. See, Jesus Christ came about the spiritual concept. You know, you know what I'm saying? So this is it. Uh, but the, the, the thing about it is, uh, let me make a side comment. You, you don't have to respond to it, yeah. just a side comment. I was having a conversation with a Christian friend of mine last week. And he, Keep repeating the same verses you repeat. But God so loved this world. I didn't mention other verses, but okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it was the quite most, the most famous. Yeah, one very popular. And I wasn't paying it, I mean, I was listening to the conversation and I would share with you what I thought, but I you know, what I thought about it. God so loved this world that he gave his only begotten son. In my view, God never loved this world. God have no love for this world. Because the vast majority of times, this world is governed by evil forces, the forces of darkness. Number one, God never loved this world because God is going to destroy this world and create his own kingdom. So God in love this world, that's number one. And number two, in the very same Bible, God make it very crystal clear that whosoever is in love with this world has formed enmity against God. So God is, have no love for this world. So hence the reason why I was saying to my brethren that we take issue with, with, with that statement because... God in love this world and if if it is if it is that God had one begotten son a unique one begotten son the only begotten son would God sacrifice his one son for a world in which he don't even love so that's why I, I take some issues with some of that quotes and I, the only reason I mention it is because it's mentioned as you said so often and so popular it's, it's such a popular but that's just a side comment. Let me tell you. Let me tell you what I think we need to kind of introduce as a new topic. You and I would lose everything in life that we have to Satan and to damnation and to the hellfire. If we put our lives upon a God that is a false God. So according to the Bible, one of the sins that is unforgivable, that if we die upon this sin, it's unforgivable. We will not see God's forgiveness, we will not see his mercy, we will never see God's face, and that sin is idolatry. Idolatry is the worst sin, it is treason against God, and even though we may pursue path of righteousness or goodness, all our good deeds will be invalidated if we are worshiping God based on idolatry. So the question is, you will go to some countries and they worship, they say they, they claim they're worshiping God. But when you look at the practice, they are idolaters. And I am simply saying, you and I, to me and you, I'm talking to myself first, I'm not speaking to you in, in any rude manner like that, I'm talking to myself. If I was to do all that I think is right, I think is right, but in the end, my actions are guilty of idolatry. I've wasted my entire life. Whether it's the blood of Jesus, 
whether it's fasting, whether it's charity, whether it's prayers, all that, our lives are wasted if our worship is based on idolatry. And hence the reason why I'm saying, if we can meet another time, and you could do a little more research, and I could do a little more research, and you look at your scriptures and see the stance, the position God treats idolatry. And I could bring from my scriptures and show you how idolatry, which we call shirk, we call it shirk, idolatry, how God treats idolatry as treason. So I'm saying to you one of the most fundamental, foundational concepts of the Bible as a whole is that mankind shall not commit idolatry with God. God does not like idolatry. And whosoever dies in idolatry shall not receive no forgiveness, no mercy, no kingdom, no paradise. And they will never see the face of God if they die upon idolatry. So whether you are a Christian or you are a Muslim, you believe in God, you have to ensure that we do not die upon idolatry. And idolatry has multiple different manifestations. So there's about six different manifestations of idolatry. The classical idolatry is that people worship stones and idols, like classical. But idolatry is to love anything equal to the way you love God. Nothing should be held equal to God or above God. So if I was to love a man or a prophet or my car, or my house, or my job, or my career, more than I love God, or equal the way I love God, that's idolatry. If I was to love Muhammad, or Jesus, or Moses, or Abraham, equal to the way I love God, or above loving God, then I have committed idolatry. If I worship the Holy Spirit, worship Him, more than I worship God, or love God, or I worship the Holy Spirit, that's clear idolatry. So I'm simply saying to you for, if we was to have a part two, the part two will be part to this. Part two is happening, part two is happening. <laughs> What's my, what is his name again? Abdullah. Conde, Evangelist Conde, yes. Yeah. So part two will really be, from a biblical point of view, what is the biblical stance towards idolatry and the different manifestations of idolatry. And I will present to you the strong views of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran concerning shirk, which is idolatry. And we were going to say now, if mankind was to die upon idolatry, whether you worship hedonism, you worship material, you worship pleasures, you follow your desire, if you serve all these things other than God or equal to God, that is considered idolatry. So the manifestations of shirk, it could be other than God or equal to God. You believe in God? But you still hold materialism with love, the same love that you should give to God. So this kind of idolatry is, I think, mankind needs to rid himself of it because idolatry brings plagues in a society. Every nation before that engage in idolatry, they have brought plagues on the doorstep. And I would argue, today we have experienced plagues. One of the biggest plagues that is on our doorstep now is broken families. One of the biggest plagues we have is worshiping materialism and science. They put science in front of God. People here who claims to be believers in God, they put freedom of speech in front and above having good manners and good ethics. So this is what I'm saying. If we was to have a, a part two conversation, a follow up on this, really to kind of um, understand the worst sin, the unforgivable sin, if it's if anyone dies upon these sins, which is treason against God, you will never see God face. No forgiveness, no mercy, no paradise, nothing. Definitely, we definitely have a part two of um, idolatry. Now we picked up a topic like uh, idolatry, and also I want to touch on that love concept next week. Uh, next week, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay, next if, week. Yeah, if possible, yeah. Okay, um, we'll change and all that. Okay, uh, so just some. Okay, because we can. I, I, I love the way just summarize what we spoke. We spoke about today. So we just, we, I just my Christianity, the brother just his his, 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 his his belief in Islam. Yeah. 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 So okay. So and then we and then we went from there. Okay. Like, that's it. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Like, I'll leave it there. Uh, We're closed. Yeah. So it was a great pleasure, yeah, yeah, and I'm very pleased to see such a young man like yourself, who have made that change. Plenty of young men might be inspired to see a lot of them they're wasting their life going to prison and drugs, getting high, um, living in a. a uh, you know, in a time where it's so godless, it's a secular society, governments 
states are moving very secular and they're taking faith and religion out of politics and they're governing the world in almost in a godless fashion and that is filtering down to um, our nation. So um, I'm very pleased to see that you have made that change and I can see that um, I hope that your journey will continue to pursue truth and to know God stronger and better. And what you know of God, that you share that with others, yeah. and that you're learning, you're, you know, I mean, you're, good, very, you're a good listener. Um, good listeners are good learners. And good listeners and learners make good teachers. So if you're good listening and you're a good learner, you'll be a good teacher. So you're doing a fantastic job, and I really admire that and appreciate, yeah, that's, you know. That's as I say, I evangelize, so I spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, that's what I do. So I give people revelation that God is real, God is love. You know, that's it. So just be, 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 that's it. God is God is God is people is understand. God doesn't want to burden you. I think people have a misconception about these religions, okay, whether Christianity, Islam or others. God doesn't want to burden you. The Christian uh, religion has been brought down we won't say that it's been brought down for time, could even say in the nature that something created all this, something created me and you. There is a God, there must be, okay, they call it the supreme being, but God, the creator. So, yeah. Uh. But who is this God and the attributes of God is a conversation we can have. Next week as well, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, who this God is and who this God is not. And I think Satan has been doing a job, a good job, in deceiving mankind about God. Satan's job is to deceive you. And Satan is the arch deceiver. And every time God presents his kingdom, his way unto mankind, Satan creates a counterfeit. So Satan is a master in counterfeit. So he creates a fraudulent concept of who God is. So the next conversation we can have really is learning of the attributes of God and the uniqueness of God. God is so unique. And this is what mankind needs to know. And when I say mankind, I mean all human beings, whether you're serving God or you're not serving God, they need to understand, you know, how the unique characteristics of God that separates God from his creation. And if we don't separate... Okay, uh, okay you see, it says, well, I'm, I'm a, okay, next week I might say how it connects, but you said separation, but we'll deliver it next week. Okay? Both, yes. Okay. Yeah, there's a connection and there's a separation. Uh, yes. yes. So there's a valid connection. Go, we seek in that connection through knowledge. Yeah, we seek in that connection. And we seek in that connection through understanding. And we have shared understanding, collective understanding, collective reasoning, collective exploring of the scriptures. Yeah, we're learning. Yeah. So there is a connection. Yes, I totally accept that. But also, um, God stands uniquely separate from his creation because he is a perfect God. It's perfect, right? Man is not perfect. So God is perfect and so there is a distinction, there is a separation between the creator and the creation. And I, yes, I do agree on the, the connection part. We can talk about that. But the perfection of God, he is so perfect. There's nothing in his creation that is close to his perfection. The perfection of God, there's nothing in his creation that is close to his perfection. Nothing. Every, just name his creation and you will see imperfection. Every one of his creation is imperfect and is 100 million percent reliant upon him and God does not rely upon anyone. He does not need anyone. So the independence of God, the perfection of him, um, the attributes of God is a conversation we can have. And we also like to touch on, on the because, uh, And that helps, that helps in the conversation of idolatry yeah. from monetism. It helps that. Um, we'll never know why, but it's God's love, but we try, we'll try to touch on, because God is God, um, the purpose of creation. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yes, 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 yeah. yes, no doubt, absolutely. That, that must, that, that's a must, yes, that's a must. And I am sure we will come to some unanimous um, understanding on it. I'm looking forward to it. So thank you so much, my friend. It's been a pleasure. Have a good one. God bless everyone, all the channels. Say best. Part two next week, yes. Okay. Stay tuned. I don't know who's, um, but that was really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah, one is yeah, yours? Yeah. Sorry. What's your channel about it? Uh, Kingdom Speakers, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 You have another mic on you? There's someone else here. Yeah. All right. 
But that was really nice, bro. Yeah, nice. No, no, yeah. yeah. So we started from nothing. We worked our way up. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice conversation. Maybe next yeah. week we could add again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You brought us together. Wonderful. Wonderful. You brought us together. Yeah. And normally, I don't. Rob will tell you, I don't engage with a lot of people. But if Rob introduce you, I say, well, that's quite because I'm not a debater. Yeah. My style is different, as you can appreciate. It's very different. We're more like discussing anyway, even what we did here. Yeah, we're just yeah, discussing. Yeah. Uh, remember, when I said born again, just remember, when you speak to, to someone else, they may have a clue what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. What's your name, but again? Abdullah. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Can we exchange, yes? Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah, but I don't know who's Mike. These are. You hold it for us and you hold it when the people come. This is still recording. Can you stop the recording? Stop, stop recording, yeah, stop recording. On both. Yeah.